Chef Donna Hamlin of Impressional Sweets, and thank you for joining me today as I make one of my family's favorite weeknight meals. It is homemade hamburger helper. It is very delicious and it's all done in one pot. So when I first met my husband, his favorite meal came from a box which you just added one pound of ground beef to. So I decided to show him that I can make him a non-processed version of it. And as our little joke, we call it hamburger assistant, um, just so we don't, you know, copy off names and stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to make my hamburger assistant. We are gonna start by adding, we're gonna crisp up or brown up our bacon. And you know, everything's better with bacon. So I'm gonna brown, crisp up our bacon. I'm going to start that and what I'm using I'm gonna cook it all what I what I love for so let me start over what I love about this is that it's all done in one pot so I don't have to pull out a whole bunch of different pans I can do it in one pot it's gonna take about 45 minutes to an hour to make but it's all in one pot so I'm not dirty enough a whole bunch of dishes so we're gonna start in a Dutch oven by browning our bacon so I'm gonna cut this on about medium high and then we're gonna just start browning our bacon. Ooh. And I have five strips of bacon. It's about five strips. I think I might have put six in there, but the recipe is going to call for five strips of bacon. We're going to cook this until it's nice and crispy. Then we're going to pull it out and I'm going to set it aside and then we're going to add it back later but we're gonna get this nice and crispy first. And I just chopped it up. I took five strips, chopped it up, um, just until, you know, fairly decent sized pieces, not really teeny tiny, because as you cook it, the bacon's gonna shrink um, as it browns. All right, oh, and it's a smoked bacon, so I love using smoked bacon, and it just, just smells so good. Oh my goodness, delicious smelling bacon. And because we're getting this the bacon nice and crispy, I always add just the extra strip of bacon because people like to come around and steal little pieces of your bacon while it's sitting aside. So if some of it gets taken away because you have eating it or your family members have came by and eating it, you still have enough bacon to add to your your um, helper. All right, now we got some nice action going on here. All right, again, we're on medium high heat. Just gonna keep it going until it starts to brown. And we're gonna render some of that fat off of that bacon too, which we're gonna leave in there because it's gonna help us when we add the rest of our ingredients. I gotta pause that camera for a I'm just gonna stir occasionally just to get those pieces broken up so they don't stick to each other. But not too much because I really want it to get it brown. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stir it just to move it and then I'm just gonna let it mellow and sit there and continue to get brown.
sloppy bacon. All right, so I'm gonna remove my bacon now. Drain off as much of that fat as I can so that I can leave it in here for when I add the onions. are giving caramelly and translucent color. I'm going to add some salt and some pepper. The salt is going to help draw a little bit more of the liquids out of the onions and pepper is going to be for flavor. Now I'm not going to add too much because we don't want to over salt or over pepper it. When we come back in the end then we'll add more seasoning to our taste. But just that right there, gorgeous, beautiful, caramelized onions that has slightly translucent color and kind of goldeny kind of caramel coloring as well. So from here, I'm gonna add three cloves of garlic. I really like garlic. The recipe just calls for three. So I added an extra clove of garlic because I really like garlic. So I'm gonna add my garlic to it. Then I'm just gonna cook that just until it's very fragrant and garlic smelling and then very fragrant <laughs> and garlic smelling. And it's just minced garlic, just a nice rough chop of some fresh garlic. And it doesn't take long for this garlic to cook up and we're still cooking in our bacon grease or our bacon fat. So I'm just gonna cook it for about a minute or two just till I start to see some color in my garlic. And then I'm gonna add my ground beef to it. So I use about an 85-15 lean ground beef. Sometimes I use 90-10 only because I really like not that much fat in there for it to be a nice meaty kind of flavor or taste in my meat. But you can use 80-20 as well. If that's the type of ground beef that you like, but I always use about 85, 15. And I'm using an organic ground beef. But again, you can use whatever ground beef that you can get your hands on. All right. So we're gonna turn it up to about medium high. And this is to get our ground beef nice and seared and crispy. And we want to cook it all the way through. When I add this ground beef, it's going to get all the extra little bits of caramelization that's at the bottom of our pan up. So I'm gonna let that brown up a little bit and get nice and crispy brown. I'm gonna grab a towel, wipe up all my little beef juice so we can stay sanitary. Yeah. Right. All right, so my beef is just about finished browning. And then what we're gonna do, since it is an 85-15, it has Quite a bit of um, grease or juice that has drained off has uh, came off of the beef so we're gonna drain most of it it's gonna leave just a little bit in there to keep the meat more keep the meat moist but I got a few little bit of pink spots to get rid of and then we'll be ready to drain Already smelling so good, so fragrant. All right, no more pink in my beef. And we got a nice brown color. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain 
most of this off. a strainer don't have to just gonna drain off most of this and leave a little bit just to keep it moist all right there we go so I'm gonna cut this back on and then we're gonna add our white wine so this is about a cup of white wine it's going to, not only is it going to deglaze the bottom of our pan to get those extra little bits off of there, it is also going to penetrate our meat and flavor it with just a little wine. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil and let it reduce. So I'm gonna let it reduce for about 10 minutes and that's gonna concentrate that nice wine flavor. And I say about a good, rule of thumb for picking out which wine you want to use if you will not drink the wine then you shouldn't cook with the wine so you should always have a wine that tastes good enough for you to drink that you can cook with so while we're waiting for it to reduce i'm gonna go ahead and enjoy me a glass of wine ah nothing like a little wine while you're cooking yummy 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 that is good that's really good yeah so we're starting to simmer here and we're just gonna let it reduce for about 10 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and put 10 minutes on my clock and let that reduce We got about two minutes in. Just gonna give it one quick little stir and then we're gonna let it continue to reduce. All right. Okay, so our wine has reduced a little bit more than half. Now we're gonna add our remaining ingredients. So, we're gonna add three cups of chicken stock, cup of heavy cream, and our two cups of dry macaroni. So, in goes our chicken stock, heavy cream, dry macaroni and we're also going to add our bacon back in now and for our, a little bit of more flavor we're going to add two teaspoons of smoked paprika you want to make sure that you use a nice smoky paprika It's gonna add a nice smoky flavor to it that's gonna complement our already smoky bacon that's in there. And we're gonna add one bay leaf. My bay leaves are a little small, so I'm gonna go ahead and add two, it's like two and a half to mine. And then we're gonna give this a stir. Oh, it smells so good, y'all, smells so good. And again, so convenient it does take a little longer than that little box meal but it's well worth it in the end we're gonna bring this to a boil and we're gonna let it boil for nine minutes so I'm gonna go ahead turn this on high let it come to a boil and then we're gonna let it go for nine minutes that's gonna get our pasta cooked so it's nice and al dente here my timer Oh, 
So occasionally while it's oh sorry. <laughs> occasionally while it's boiling, you just want to come back and occasionally stir it. You do want to make sure that you do not cover it, so you leave the lid off because we want this um, liquid to it's not only going to be absorbed by the uncooked pasta, but it's also has to evaporate so that it can lessen the amount of liquid in there. If you cover it, all the liquid's gonna stay in there. But you wanna keep it uncovered so that the steam can escape and then that the um, pasta can absorb, be absorbed by the liquid. Or liquid be absorbed by the pasta. We have about five more minutes left on our pasta to get cooked. And if nine minutes is too long for your pasta, um, just follow whatever the instructions are in the box. So once you have added your uh, chicken stock and your cream to it and it's come to a boil, then you add your noodles. Uh, so however long it takes for your specific brand pasta to cook on the box till al dente that is what you're cooking to mine it's about uh, seven to nine minutes i'm gonna go ahead and go the whole nine minutes so i have about three more minutes left on that and you can also occasionally just pull a noodle out and check your noodle too Still a little, still a little undercooked, so I'm gonna let that go. So while we're on our last few minutes, I'm gonna get my cheeses that we're gonna add to help give it that nice and creaminess, you know, like that hamburger uh, meal that you make. So I have about one and a half cups of cheddar cheese and then i have american cheese so american cheese i have about five slices of just american cheese so when you buy your american cheese make sure you get the one that is not um cheese food it'll say cheese food or cheese product you want to get the one that's like really american cheese i really love the deli the one that you get from behind the deli counter that you can get sliced um that's a really good american cheese to use it helps, it's gonna help this stay nice and creamy. If we just use cheddar, it will get a little, a little gritty um, as it melts. And when you add the American cheese, it helps it get stay nice and creamy. So we are almost there, almost ready to add our cheese. As you see, our liquid has reduced because it has been absorbed by the pasta. And we've kind of let it go all up into the air with the steam and the evaporation. So before I add my cheese, I do wanna make sure that I fish out my bay leaves. So the bay leaves that are in here, you do wanna pull them out because they uh, render a nice flavor in your um, liquid, your broth, but it does not taste too good to eat. It's gonna taste like you're eating a leaf. Nobody wants to get the leaf. So as soon as my timer goes off, we'll be finished and it's reducing very lovely very very lovely so i got one bay leaf fish out my other bay leaf and i think i put about two and a half so i'm gonna search there it is i found it found it found it all right i know that my noodles are nice and done so i'm going to go ahead and turn my heat down to low or you can cut it off 
if you have an um, electric eye that you're using, I'm using induction, so it's gonna cut off like immediately. But if I was using an electric eye, the heat would remain, so I would just cut it off. And then I'm gonna add my cheeses. My cheddar cheese. All right, put my cheese in. Now I'm gonna stir until this gets nice, all my, until all my cheese is melted and it's nice and creamy. So with that liquid that's left in there, it's gonna turn into a nice kind of cheese sauce. looking beautifully gorgeous probably looking very familiar but all grown up I'm gonna keep stirring because my cheese is almost completely melted not quite yet and then we're gonna taste it so we're gonna do a taste test to see if we need any more salt or pepper All right, so I got all my cheese is melted. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off. Oh, that sounds delicious. All right, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna move my heat source out of the way. And while that's sitting, I'm going to get some chives. I'm gonna chop up some chives to go into this. It's gonna add a little green color and of course a nice little oniony flavor to it as well. So I need about a half a cup of chives. You can put more, you can put less. I'm gonna also save back some just to garnish it when I plate it. And you want to cut your chives fairly small. They're all unraveling on me. <laughs> there we go. And I have a few little pieces. I always like the little pieces closer to the knife that doesn't, <laughs> that don't quite get cut. So I'm just gonna put those pieces back in there and just chop those. Up. So that is a good enough amount. And I will save these ones for another time. Oops. Just gonna add a few chives in here for some nice green color. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, y'all, it smells so good. So I'm gonna go grab me a spoon, put these back here. We're gonna save that for garnish. Gonna go grab me a spoon and a bowl <laughs> so that I can serve it in. All right, so I am going to taste it to see if we need any more. It's very hot, it's very hot. Mm, that was so good. 
I'm gonna add a little more pepper to it. But we're good on our salt. Now, if you like to spice it up a little bit, you can also add hot sauce to this. Hot sauce will give it a really nice, really nice spice. All right, so we're gonna try this one more time. That should be good enough. Perfect. So that is, so get you a nice little cute little dish to serve it in. Make sure you get a good amount of the bacon and the pasta. Now, this is good enough to be a meal all by itself. But you can also serve this, I would probably serve it with just a little side salad or something to go with it. So have that, we'll top it with some more of our chives. And there you have it. That is our homemade from scratch hamburger assistant or hamburger helper. Thanks for joining me.